BTB Kicks here and today I'm going to be telling you all three things you'll need to do to start a successful sneaker restoration business plus Q&A at the very end. So my reason behind making this video is, you know, I, I do sneaker restorations. Um, people know me as BTB Kicks and I make content on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, etc. A lot of people ask me how do I get started and they have different questions about if they want to do their own thing, what should they use. I thought making this video would be a good idea just so I can clear some things up for people who want to get into sneaker restoration and don't really know where to start. So with that being said, I'm going to list off a couple things that I believe are the most important when starting out a sneaker restoration business and these are things that I did as well. And through experience I've kind of learned what to do per se too. So it's kind of like saving y'all some trouble from having to figure it out yourself. So first up on the list of things is, uh, which I, I think is pretty obvious, is you'll need a sneaker cleaning set. And I've, I've tried a couple different brands. I've tried the Jason Mark, I've tried Crep, I've tried the, the different ones, but the one that I really like and have stuck with and have even recently become an affiliate of is Rejuvenator. I will say Rejuvenator is the brand that I that I use currently and have been using for the longest time when I started doing sneaker restoration and things like that. Um, I would say their product is really, really simple and it, and it does a very great job. Uh, the basic setup that I would recommend getting is the signature shoe cleaning kit. Um, it gives you pretty much everything you'll need. Like, while in, in this case, this is I've already opened this and I use I take stuff out and use it as like props for promo stuff like that. It comes with shoe trees, which you'll definitely need to get the shoes you know looking even better when you clean them. Microfiber cloth, of course. Solution. And then the three brushes, which are essential. The essential things out of this kit are really just the brushes, the and the solution and the shoe trees for the best clean. This kit is uh, kind of like a step up. It has a couple more things in it. I'll read the stuff off the back. The soft brush like creates the suds and gets rid of all the, you know, the dirt. And then you go back in with the medium to get to get rid of the other dirt and stuff like that. And then of course the stiff bristle brush to like clean the sole and, and like midsoles and stuff like that with harder stains. In this kit, the signature shoe cleaning kit, it includes a four ounce rejuvenator cleaning solution, soft bristle, medium bristle, stiff bristle, shoe laundry bag which i'll get into later on shoe trees and then a microfiber towel so i would definitely recommend rejuvenator not only say, not saying that just because i'm an affiliate uh i've tried other brands like i said before but this brand is definitely the way to go i watched youtube videos of vic almighty when i was coming up basically trying to learn how to do my own shoes and stuff like that and just seeing what he could do with three brushes some solution and some shoe trees in a towel, like it's, it's crazy. If you don't believe me, go go check it, go check it out, go check it out. Like if you do decide to purchase some rejuvenator, I'll have it linked down below. Use code BCB Kicks for 10% off your purchase. Moving on to tip number two, and that happens to be practice. So when I first started out cleaning shoes, like I said, I was watching Vic Almighty do sneaker restorations on YouTube using rejuvenator products, and me being a sneakerhead, I had shoes of my own of different materials and different, you know, silhouettes and different different things like that. And I actually had to practice on my own before I could, you know, do somebody else's shoes. Because who wants to be on the hook for messing somebody's shoes up when you you're not even like good good like that yet? So what I did was I kept watching his videos and practicing on my own shoes. Learn how to clean leather. Learn how to clean clean suede. Learn how to clean mesh shoes. And then eventually people actually started asking me, like in my case, this is, I kind of came upon sneaker restorations by accident. People started asking me to clean their shoes at school because they seen that I kept my shoes so clean. But you know, being a sneakerhead, you don't really mess up your shoes to begin with, but you gotta know how to clean your own shoes being a sneakerhead. So one of my classmates gave me a pair of his shoes, cleaned them, brought them back the next day, didn't think anything of it. He was amazed. He started telling other students at school, and other students started asking me to clean their shoes. Then students from different schools started asking me to clean their shoes, and then eventually adults started asking me to clean their shoes. And just like that, I had a business. So it, it could really be that simple, but before anything e even started, like I had to get my practice in on my own shoes to even feel comfortable enough to work on somebody else's shoes because I didn't want to mess up their shoes and be on the hook for it. So get your practice in. Which leads me on to tip number three. You must have a passion for sneakers. You're obviously here for a reason watching this video. 
if you wanted to get into sneakers and create a business out of sneakers, you must like sneakers. So that's kind of like where my story came from. Like I really loved sneakers and in school, like this is this is kind of sidetracked, but I, I would sell honey buns and chips and things like that during middle school and high school just to have enough money to buy myself more shoes. Like it's not like my parents didn't buy me shoes and stuff like that. It's just that I wanted every single drop or every single release that I wanted. And at a certain point, they were just like, like no, Blake, like, you're going to have to find a different way. Like, you're going to have to find it, find a way on your own. So me being an entrepreneur, I started selling snacks in school and ended up putting together enough money to get the shoes that I wanted. Through that passion, I just dove straight into sneaker culture and taking care of my own sneakers and just everything sneakers and learn how to clean shoes. And then you see me now, I'm just taking care of other people's shoes. And then this is my, kind of like my bonus tip. I know I said three tips, but here's a bonus. Uh, this is one I picked up from, from my boy, Christian, or Swole Ricketts, as you all may know him as. But it's to post on multiple social media platforms and be consistent, of course. So what he would do when he first started was he had Instagram, he had TikTok, Snapchat too, but Instagram and TikTok were his main ones, I believe, first and he would post workout videos every day. But then eventually, once he started getting more and more content, he would post multiple times a day on like multiple different platforms. And that's where he really blew up. He started posting, I think, two to three times a day on TikTok and one to two times on Instagram and all the different platforms, still promoting his brand. So my point is, in doing this, you're, you're really spreading across different ways how people can discover you. Like basically bringing up the awareness of your brand. So the more you post, somebody might see you on one platform, then they might go and follow you on a different platform. And then, you know, it just, it's just snowball effect. So the more you post, um, the more likely somebody will see your stuff and kind of engage, but also being consistent along with that boost you up because it's like a snowball effect, like I said before. It, I, I honestly think of digital content and just content creation as, as digital real estate. So over time, it's gonna you know increase in value, especially if you stay consistent and more and more people will come to see you have videos. So like, for example, you're more likely to engage with an account that posts often and always has quality content versus one that posts every so often and the content can be hit or miss. So finding things to post every day is, is definitely the best thing to do. But if you're doing shoes, you might post before and after pictures every day, but also try to figure out a way to diversify it so people don't get bored, you know what I mean? So maybe you might show a process of how you do a, a certain type of shoe or showing people what you use or showing like talking giving out tips on how to do certain things like the the whole aspect of you know is free game another thing that christian uh talks about free game like people people are gonna love free game like you know like if you, instead of gatekeeping you're giving out information how everybody can benefit and you'll be more likable that way and you'll grow your audience as well so i would definitely recommend posting on multiple platforms and just do what you can to spread across the awareness of your brand and things like that. So now we can hop in the Q&A. So these are some of the questions that I got from people. So off the bat, from Hood Bachelor, what's the tools needed? Lights, how to wash without damaging shoes. Okay, so let me answer the first part of your question. What's the tools needed? You really only need three brushes and some, some cleaning solution, sneaker cleaning solution. There is a difference. Yeah, it's pretty much really all you need for real. Lights. So lights, I don't know if you, well you all definitely can't see the lights, but I have like three lights right here. Like one here, one here, and then a ring light right here. My setup's not the most like professional, it's definitely an amateur type setup. But when cleaning shoes, I would definitely say you need a light so you can see what you're cleaning and see what's there. Um, so I'd, I'd probably say, a 14 inch ring light probably do the trick and then for how to wash shoes without damaging shoes what I do is well I learned from watching the Vic do shoes on rejuvenator he clean hand cleans them first with the three different brushes and then the laundry system that goes along with it I'll actually go grab that really quick all right so here it is right here it's the rejuvenator laundry bag you put your shoes in this and it's, it's stretchy like you can put one pair of shoes in here and then uh, I use a sneaker, laundry pods, rejuvenator as well. These do wonders. Whatever you can't clean out by hand, the machine will finish up. So it's really smooth, really easy process. 
Next question I got was from Kyle Mitchell. He asked, favorite model to rock, hardest material to clean? Favorite model to rock would probably have to be Jordan 1 Low. I probably have like 10 to 12 pairs of Jordan 1 Lows. Those are my favorite all time. Hardest material to clean? Um, I'd probably say, I'd probably say mesh to some degree, only because there's certain meshes, like for example, in the Presto, they have like that little mesh that's kind of like, it's kind of spongy. So if you leave water in that or don't get all of the like soap and stuff out when you're cleaning it, it'll turn yellow after it dries and then you'll have to re kind of reclean it. But there's a tip, there's like a workaround for that um, that I'll talk about in a different video, but it's probably the hardest to clean as far as that. But if I'm being honest, the, the shoe that I, dislike cleaning the most is definitely Air Force Ones. That shoe is, a, is like very tease to clean, not gonna lie. But, you know, I get the job done. This next question comes from Souls and Brims. And his question was, how do you market yourself properly and how do you find your target audience? Okay, so to answer your first question, uh, how do you market yourself properly? I would say, let people know what you do. So let your friends, family, and people know at school. Don't be afraid to let people know what you're doing, like your what your business is, what you take pride in doing, what you're learning on how to do, and just showcasing it. Uh, I feel like the more you tell people, the more comfortable you'll be with kind of promoting yourself and also kind of approaching people as well. Like some things I do is I carry business cards with me at all times. And if I see somebody with some shoes, I mean, I might be like, hey bro, nice shoes. I, I'm, I'm Blake, you know, introduce myself and then tell them like, you know, I do sneaker restorations and customizations and stuff like that. And then hand them my card. Like they might not message me or they might not even follow or even care, but just going out and doing it and promoting yourself, it's just like something you kind of have to do to kind of market yourself and be successful. You just have to, you have to do it. Like. Most of my customers I get are through word of mouth, and I'm really trying to find out, find out ways on how to get customers shipping me shoes in, because I have the local customers down, because they know me, because I'm always out promoting myself, saying like doing different things, like walking around, introducing myself to people. I did giveaways at a certain point to kind of promote my business as well. Uh, walking around campus, putting up flyers for my business, all sorts of things. So. To market yourself, I would say definitely start off as a beginner. Start off with your friends and people who you go to school with and kind of just show them what you what you know how to do. You might even just, if you have a friend that has some dirty shoes or something like that, be like, hey bro, let me see your shoes. Like I'm, I'm gonna clean them up and then take some good pictures of them before and after for content and then just showcase that. Ask, ask them to also shout out your business as well. Like if you, if you do a pair of shoes for somebody, ask them to repost repost the post or just shout you out or something like that after you do them so you can also grow that way and build your network of clients. That's probably how I got discovered from people from different schools because everybody knows somebody and the more people that hear about you and the more exposure you get, the more customers you'll get too. And then to answer the second part of your question was um, how to find your target audience. Your target audience is really just people who like shoes and I feel like they'll find you as well. If you just keep promoting and doing the things that I said earlier and just like a, a couple minutes ago on you know promoting yourself and just running your business just stay consistent post good content don't be afraid to promote and always promote last question I got comes from Ruben how do you manage clients it just depends on the different jobs that you have to do because some people might want like like a midsole repaint some people might want just a basic clean um, and then of course you gotta deal with materials like somebody might have a suede shoe that requires different care than a leather shoe. I would just say as soon as you get a pair of shoes in, just knock it out so that way you're not getting like backed up with a bunch of shoe orders and then it's gonna take all day to do. Then you'll kind of get like in the mood where it's like oh I don't, I don't feel like it or it's, it's a lot I gotta do or you feel overwhelmed. Like I would just say as soon as you get a pair of shoes in, just knock it out. So it's just no hassle. And then on top of that, you're doing a, you're, you're providing a great service if you're doing your work fast and you give out quality results because that's what people want, fast and quality. And, and cheap, of course, but you can't have all three. <laughs> that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know if you all have any questions down below in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. 
Like I said before, if you need any Rejuvenator products, use code BTBKICKS at checkout and you'll get 10% off of your purchase. It also helps support me as well uh, with purchasing Rejuvenator products as I am an affiliate. I'll have that link down below where you can just cop that stuff and I'll see you all in the next one.